everybody. Welcome uh, to the first edition of Inside Tiger Football this year. I'm Adam Hildebrand alongside Tiger Football Head Coach Josh Blankenship. Of course, it is brought to you again by Rib Crib. We're in the new AeroVision Podcast Studios, which uh, is pretty cool. Uh, getting to change up the format a little bit this year, and, and you guys get a little bit of a look at uh, what the students here at Broken Arrow High School are getting to experience and, and work with uh, over the course of their time here. So, so happy to have this set up. Coach, uh, we're, we're one game in, went on the road, uh, lost a, a tough game throughout at Bentonville last week. Let, let's get kind of just your general thoughts on on the season opener and, and what you thought about game one. General thoughts, obviously not getting a win just makes you ill, uh, especially when you uh, see that it's there for the taking. Um, so once I got over that um, and got to watch the film and start moving on our plan uh, for Union, uh, was actually very excited about the team that we have. Um a lot of potential, which that doesn't mean much unless you tap into it. But, uh, you know, it was correctable mistakes, um, you know, which is encouraging because that's, I think, why we are coaches. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, we actually have to do our job. Um, w- there weren't any issues um, like lack of effort. Um, we didn't have any uh, season-ending injuries. Um, we battled, man. We just we, – we had some moments where they caught us misaligned, uh, bad eyes, missed tackles. Um, some things that I think we can get right, and uh, the future looks very, very bright for our, our club. You know, you talk about uh, not not having anybody give up, you know, effort throughout. Right. Uh, Spav and I talked about it some. That last offensive drive where you just kind of, you know, zip, zip, zip right down the field right. seemed like a good indicator of, of where this team's head was at. Is that what you saw also? I think so. Um, you know, I thought we had some critical errors there and, and some situational football. That That's one of the few games where you see so many uh, we talk about situations that we practice uh, all the time but you had one minute drill you had a Hail Mary right before the half uh, we had a, a four minute uh, four minute drill there where uh, Bentonville was trying to run the clock out we got a stupid penalty two stupid penalties mm-hmm. um, so functioning better in those situations um, are critical but even that one minute drive there at the end where we went down and scored the one before where we needed to go down and score we took two sacks yeah. Uh, that can't happen in a one minute drill, but correctable things. Let's let's talk a little bit about that offense because it put up well over 500 yards in that game. Uh, so the offense was was pretty solid uh, in terms of the statistical output. And and we talked a little bit uh, about you know those three guys you had at running back. Uh, Kyber Harris went for 112 yards and three scores. Nate Jones 105 yards and a touchdown. And then Caden Jones, a freshman, 12 touches, 70 yards, and and he scored as well. That is a lot of depth, and you don't see a lot of true freshmen in the backfield uh, in their you know first game of their career. How does having that kind of depth allow you guys to operate differently as an offense as opposed to if you had you know kind of one cowbell back? Right, which is what it felt like last year. Um, you know, when when Marion couldn't go, uh, we were hurting. Um, you know, this year we we uh, feel like we really didn't take a step back losing Marion because of having that three headed monster. Um, we get to keep our guys fresh. Um, there's no drop off with one, when one guy goes in over the other. Um, so that allows us to play our tempo and the pace that we play at. Um, Cause you get to rotate those guys like you do receivers. And, it seems like that would be important, not only in a singular game like we had last week, but when you get to week seven, oh, eight, no nine into the playoffs, yeah. because you just got less mileage on those on those legs. Well, and and you you see this every year, but especially in the the league in the district that we're in, it's a war of attrition, man. It's mm-hmm. uh you know who who's going to be healthy going into the playoffs, and uh, it, it certainly helps that case with the uh, with having three guys. You know uh, the. I mentioned him briefly there, Caden Jones, 12 carries, 70 yards, a touchdown. First of all, my apologies uh, for having his his uh, name wrong on the on the sheet last week. Uh, so a big shout out to him. I want, I want to give him some pub. But what does it take for a true freshman yeah. to be able to step into a first game like that and, and not only play, but play well and be productive? Because that's not something you see a lot at this level. He's different. Um, and, and that's a credit to uh, his parents and because uh, there's a lot of maturity there outside of what he can do physically. Uh, he does well in school. Um, you know, we put him with us. Uh, I mean, the freshman group didn't even get to have him. Um, mm-hmm. we, we put him with us uh, right after uh, school ended, after his – think about that, after his eighth grade year. Um, mm-hmm. And he's been with us the whole time, all summer. Uh, you could tell right away when in, in the spring and team camp that uh, there was something special to him, but just how he's matured through the summer and developed and kind of gotten comfortable. Um, and I give you another uh, credit to his maturity, uh, and it speaks volumes, but he's he's – playing some corner also now. Hmm. Uh, so not only is he able to, as a freshman, do what he's doing at running back, um, but he he's going to help us in, on the defensive side as well. With with that, because uh, running back is obviously more than just 
taking the football and running sure. fast. Uh, with those things like pass pro, find, you know, following the blockers, finding the right hole, how has he done with that mental side of playing running back at, at such a young age? Yeah, the mental side's uh, – I don't want to speak for him, but it seems to be easy for him. Uh, he's, his football IQ is off the charts. Um, I think the physicality of pass protection in this league is is something that he's going to have to continue to adjust to and, and grow into. Nate Jones as a senior is our he's our wrecking ball. He's um, you know hard to tackle, obviously, but but he's a guy that if you had your choice, he'd be your best pass pro guy right now. And uh, we saw him in a little bit of that role uh, over the course of the last game, also. Uh, so you ran for well over three hundred yards in that game. Uh, you couldn't have done that without those guys up front. Right. What, what do you feel like you have in that group of, of linemen this year? A very cohesive group. I mean, they work really well together. Um, I don't know how deep we are yet. We've got a, a young freshman and a, a sophomore, uh, some guys that, that we're going to have to call on at some point, you know, as the season goes on. Uh, but uh, Coach Pruitt and Coach Broyles have done a great job with those guys. And then the other really key ingredient, um, I think, is those tight ends, uh, Josh Wilhite and Zach Siebert and then uh, Derek Osmond. Um, Coach Gorman with, with those guys uh, have done a tremendous job of kicking off the run game. Yeah, Osmond's a sophomore, right? Uh, Osmond's a junior, junior. now, okay. um, and, but he, we've moved him over to D-line because of our lack of depth over there. Okay. Um, but he's he's playing both roles. So, I mean, he popped back in at tight end there in the second half for us. Mm, really good size for either of those yes, roles. He's, he's a big kid. Um, we, you know, we're going to hear from uh, Cade Matthews in a, right. in a little bit here. So, let, let's talk about him a little bit. Four catches, 82 yards. He led the wide receivers in those categories. Uh, what does he bring to the table with, with his skill set? Uh, they're all similar in their skill set. They run really well. Uh, they run great routes. Uh, they catch the ball really well. They, you know, what I call capture the football. They don't just cradle it into their body. Um, that's a credit to the coach Moore. Um, just done a great job of developing those guys. Um, well, I think what separates Cade right now is, is that, that maturity, uh, you know, when those lights come on, he wants to be the guy. Um, I, <laughs> I saw a meme the other day of uh, Chad Johnson. It said uh, that Chad Johnson used to call his coaches uh, in, for the Bengals at 2 a.m. at night or in the morning, and he'd just say, I'm open, and hang up the phone. <laughs> and I think that's kind of Cade. Cade wants the ball. Um, Cade always believes he's open, and I, I love that in our receivers. Very nice. Uh, we talked a little bit before the game last week about Caleb Barnett and what he brings right. to the table, and, and we saw some flashes of that speed. Uh, we how do you work on continuing to get him involved and and, and utilize his skill set? Because it looks like that's some elite level speed that he's got. Yeah, it is. Uh, you've got to you've got to mesh it with the run game. Uh, you've got to make them honor him, and they've got to decide if they want to take him away um, or, or stop the run. Uh, that's the neat thing about him playing on the inside. Um, we, we've dabbled with putting him on the outside as well, just because of you know his threat downfield. Um, so we, that's just part of game planning. You got to continue to find ways to stress a defense and make them choose what they're going to do and, and find ways to make Caleb the recipient of that stress, uh, so to speak. Um, you know, particularly in RPO stuff. You had 11 different guys catch a pass nice. in, in that game. Uh, is that something that we should expect over the course of the year? Or was that maybe just some of the way that the Bentonville defense was, was playing you guys? Uh, both. And I think that that's something our offensive guys have to be cautious of is uh, we're going to see a lot better defenses as we move forward. Um, and, you know, we can't, can't just rest. we got to continue to have a sense of urgency in our preparation on the offensive side. Um, as, as far as that many guys touching the ball, that's, uh, that's what you'd like uh, to see week in and week out. Um, you know, I feel like we kind of got boxed in last year to – knowing we had to get it to RJ and we had to get it to Marion. And then everything else was a distant third. Uh, now we don't feel like there's a drop-off with any of the guys that are touching the football. So, And, again, that will be predicated upon how healthy we stay. Uh, you told me before the game last week that you're probably going to have both quarterbacks play. I think they both played on the first drive, and, right. and they were in and out quite a bit. Uh, Owen Jones threw for 140, a touchdown and a pick. Cooper Bates was 6 for 7 mm -hmm. for 98 yards. What did you see from those two guys, and did anyone really establish themselves? Oh, You know, we're really at the point where we're not looking for one to establish themselves over the other. We're going to keep using both of them. Um, that's that's a luxury uh, we're going to take advantage of. They've embraced it. Um, it's not a – you know, early in the summer um, we were – it was more of a competition. We were hoping one guy would take the job, and as we uh, got into fall camp, it became evident that they both need to get on the field. Uh, so we're going to continue to do that. Um, I was really pleased with Cooper Bates uh, doing what I thought he would do. He showed showed this as a sophomore last year in other positions, but he, the the lights come on, and sometimes guys shrink away, and and he embraces those lights. He he shows up in big time big time moments, and he did that in that game, which I was hoping he would continue from last year. 
Uh, and then uh, Owen Jones getting his first game under his belt. Um, did a lot of really good things, and, and he's such a student of the game that the things that he didn't do well, he's going to learn now that he's got that game. What about uh, areas of improvement for the offense moving forward? I mean, there were a lot of highlights, but what right. needs to get better? I, I still think we can pick up our pace and go faster when we're trying to go fast. Um, we can't take sacks on one-minute drill. Uh, the interception was a, a missed catch, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, we pull that in, and that's not an issue. Um you know, there, there are still assignment errors or technique errors that can always be corrected that you're usually going to see in the first game of the season. So we've got plenty to work on. There's some offensive talk with head coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back to talk some defense in just a moment here on Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Right now, get $200 from TTCU Federal Credit Union when you open a new checking account with direct deposit. What would you buy with $200? Cars, race cars, my own apartment, 100 coloring books, and a puppy. Or maybe some groceries and a tank of gas. $200 for whatever works for you from TTCU. Because life is better in balance. Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Adam Hildebrandt alongside head coach Josh Blankenship. Switching over to the defensive side of the ball now. Uh, obviously, uh, Bentonville hit some big plays. That was a little bit of an issue. Uh, but And you hit on this a little bit early, but it seems like you feel like a lot of those uh, potential issues are very correctable right. things moving forward. What did, what did you see on film, and what have you guys been talking about as a, as a defense? You know, defense is such an interesting thing, and it's so different than offense. Offense, you can have mistake, 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 but then if you put it all together for a play or two, then you can find success and feel like, you know, offense is having success. Mm -hmm. Defense has to be per perfect every play or you get exposed. And they weren't perfect on a set amount of plays, maybe 20% of, of the snaps, and – it just happened that Bentonville connected and made us pay on those times that we were either misaligned uh, or our eyes were bad or we missed a tackle, um, and they took advantage of it. For uh, for the non-football vernacular folks, when you right. say eyes are bad, walk us through that a little bit. You know, if you're in man coverage and you're looking at the quarterback, it's kind of hard to play man coverage on a guy if, unless you're covering <laughs> the quarterback. Right. So, um, you know, bad eyes there uh, if they've got certain keys in a zone coverage and they're looking at the wrong thing there. Um, and then alignment, you know, if you're supposed to be in the, what we call the post area, uh, you got to be in the post area or they're going to make you pay for it. And, and they did. I mean, it was, it was pretty incredible. The, uh, the amount of big plays that their quarterback connected on mm -hmm. with their receivers. I mean, there was one that Austin Newell just had him in his fingertips on a blitz. Somehow he slipped free and got it off for a, I don't know, 60, 70 yard touchdown bomb. Um, and it just, that's defense for you. I mean, if you slip up just a few times against good players, they're going to make you pay for it. Yeah, that was an, an impressive play, an impressive throw, because he pretty much just snuck away yep. and just launched it. That guy surprised me. We uh, we kind of thought that was the guy that we wanted to make beat us. You know, we knew how good their running back was. We knew how big their O-line was. We knew how dangerous their outside receivers were. We thought he might have been the one-week link, and I think he had the game of his career. The uh, You mentioned that running back. I think he ended up with like 150 yards, but it took him – 27 carries right. to, to get there did you feel like y'all limited him okay I think we did a pretty good job um I thought our scheme was really good the plan that coach Mon had um and then you know you got to give it to that guy he he earned those yards mm -hmm. that he did get because we were hitting him hard and, and we were at the point of attack and for the most part we were where we were supposed to be um there's still room to clean things up and, and stopping the run game as well and uh, like I keep saying it's not going to get any easier for us so a sense of urgency's got to be there which it is we're going to be joined by Austin Newell here in a minute, uh, but he was a, a quarterback last year, switched over. He's playing linebacker this year. How has he done with that transition, and, and what does he still need to improve on? You know, he stepped in last year when Dietrich got hurt, and uh, that was, you know, we were trying to figure out what to do with Austin. He's he's huge. He's got a great <laughs> frame. He's got great intelligence. He's a leader. Um, but he was standing on the sideline holding a clipboard, you know, as a backup quarterback. And so at some point we tried to put him in as a tight end. Uh, he did a great job there, but that was probably one of our deepest positions last year. And then when Dietrich went down, we, we decided to just try it out. And I think he had about three or four games under his belt by the end of the season at middle linebacker. And you could see flashes of him going to be special, him going to be special. And uh, was really anxious to see how he would play in this first game, you know, kind of living, breathing, eating linebacker for the past, you know, eight months, 10 months. Mm -hmm. um, and man, he played well. I, he was our defensive MVP. Uh, I knew the effort would be there, but he was focused. Uh, he played hard. Uh, he's so physical. Uh, that was really fun to watch. You know, you, you mentioned he stepped in to 
fill in for Dietrich Moore right. after he got hurt. Now they're playing alongside each other. Right. How exciting of a prospect is that? It is. Uh, I'm glad Dietrich got to get that first game under his belt. He'd be the first to tell you he probably didn't play very well. Um, I, I'm pleased that he got, you know, coming back from that knee injury, uh, a lot of times guys can be hesitant to kind of question mm -hmm. how st stable that thing is. He didn't battle with that. He He's just got to knock the ru rust off of not having played football in a long time because we even held him out quite a bit during fall camp. So that's the most snaps he's gotten in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it was good to see him back out on the absolutely. field. Uh, who else stood out on, on the defensive end, Some somebody that was a, a highlight for you guys in the film room? Uh, Demarius Reynolds, uh, D-line, interior. Uh, you know, we're not very big on the inside of our D-line, and he, he's one of our bigger ones. And uh, uh, he was kind of in a reserve role last year. Uh, I think it was him, uh, he that had the, the big sack fumble against Owasso in the playoff game. Mm -hmm. um, so we had high expectations for him. He had a great offseason. He put on really good weight. Uh, has been working his tail off and, and really uh, developing into a leader uh, that you would expect a senior to do to be. Um, he really played well. He was uh, we, we was kind of a debate on Newell or uh, or him for uh, the defense player of the game. And so we've got another award that goes to the hog of, hog of the week, and that could be O line or D line, and and he got that. Nice. Um, you know de that defensive line that was a really deep unit last year, and and right. you're a little more thin at that position this year. So not rotating quite as many guys through. How did you feel like they held up in terms of stamina over the course of that football game? I thought, especially for the size of that offensive line they were going against, they held up really well. Um, you know, like I said, we're already thin. We're not very big at that position, um, and it's going to be a grinder all year long. But we've got some guys that were, you know, we moved Osmond over there to develop, um, hoping they he continues to uh, to grow and improve. Um, we've got some other guys that are trying to get back from uh, injuries. Uh, Shane Wyatt, um, uh, he had a knee last year. Um, he's come back from that, but then he hurt his hamstring, probably overtraining right before Jeez. the season started. Um, so we're hoping we could get him in for maybe 10 to 12, 15 snaps because he's, he's going to be gassed pretty quickly. Um, but I think for sure if we're smart with him, we'll have him back for the following week. That's head coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Ribcrit. Recently, you've had to put your life on hold, and we're with you in this. At Ascension St. John, we're now open for appointments, and we are fully prepared for your safety in our care. As we open our doors again, our doctors, nurses, and care teams will continue to wear personal protective equipment. We've taken even more steps to clean and stringently disinfect all areas. We will maintain distancing in our waiting rooms, and we'll continue to limit visitors and we will still screen all staff to protect their health and yours. Our emergency rooms are here 24 seven. Please do not delay care. We're still delivering babies and performing surgeries, and we're open for your appointments from specialists in surgical care to routine care and health screenings. Ask us about virtual visits. Ascension St. John continues to care for you as we have been for almost a century. Thank you for trusting us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Adam Hildebrand back with you. We're joined now uh, by a couple of Tiger players, Cade Matthews, Austin Newell, uh, going to break down a, a little bit of their games last Friday and, and talk about the upcoming season for them. And, and Cade, let's start with you. Four catches, 82 yards on Friday. You were able to get involved in the offense a little bit. You had a 50-plus a yarder, I think, at one point in there. So what, what, what did you think of your first game of the season? Uh, I feel like I could have done way better than I did, but I – did pretty good. All right, so a, a, a stepping stone, a step in the right direction? Yes, sir. All right, so you've, you've got a little bit more of an elevated role this year. I mean, last year, obviously, RJ took a lot of the attention, and you're one of those guys that's a candidate to kind of step up and, and take over that lead role. So what what does that mean to you? What do you feel like you have on your shoulders this season? Well, it feels the same because uh, I have great receivers on the other side, too, with Caleb Barnett and Davion Rummins and Josh McMillan. I mean, you guys have uh, – you've got size, you've got speed, and you know, there's there's kind of a mixture of tools in that wide receiver room. Do you feel like you guys fit together well and, and that you complement each other? Yes, sir. What uh, What is something that you're working on in terms of your individual game over the course of this early part of the season? My footwork, it needs to get uh, a little better. All right. And, and I assume the, the coaches have been on you about that in practice then? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be keeping an eye on, on that yeah, moving gotta, forward. I got to say, too, probably the best catch he had in the game, they called offensive pass interference, which was not a good call. Da um, down the stretch there? Yeah. The uh, the defender didn't even make a play on the ball and was just barreling into Cade. Cade had to reach around him to make the catch, and, and it was pretty incredible that he, that he pulled that off. 
interest of seeing more of those, uh, but fewer of the flags in the process uh, down the road here. All right, let's go to Austin Newell. Uh, you have been in kind of a backup quarterback role uh, in the past and moving over to the defensive side this year, playing linebacker. What's that transition been like for you? Uh, I feel like playing quarterback before has helped me a lot to understand like what the offense's uh, mindset is and how to attack that and find their weak points. So I feel like it's helped me a lot transitioning from quarterback. Did you have any experience growing up playing on the on the defensive side or playing linebacker? Uh, I've always been mainly a quarterback, but all through like INFC and stuff, I played a uh, linebacker. So, but ever since seventh grade, I hadn't played linebacker. What are, are there similarities in terms of uh, making sure the guys around you are doing the right things with you know playing quarterback and playing linebacker? Yes, sir. At the middle linebacker, I have to help uh, bring up everybody around me. I'm the one shouting a lot of the calls and checks and stuff like that. So. Uh, I'm basically the quarterback of the defense. So, what uh, what do you feel like this defense needs to uh, you know work on in, in, over the course of these first three games before we get into district play here in a couple weeks? Uh, I feel like we just need to stay focused, uh, focus more on our assignment, uh, just listen more, um, and just listen to our coaches. So. Right, well, I'm sure they'll be uh, they'll be trying to get you to listen to them over the course of we got what practice later today, I assume. So Union coming up later this week. That is Austin Newell and Cade Matthews. We'll be back with more Inside Tiger football in just a moment. For families who like to build their wealth while staying liquid, we have flexible rate CDs to keep your funds working hard even when you're not. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. Welcome back one more time to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. A big thanks to Cade Matthews and Austin Newell for stopping by and, and chatting with us for a minute. Again, I'm Adam Hildebrandt, back with Tiger head coach Josh Blankenship. Coach, you got Union coming up. Uh, they have a transfer quarterback in that uh, helped win a state championship last year. Uh, it seems like they're a pretty talented squad. What have, what have you seen them uh, from them on, on film? A uh, lot of talent, like you said, um, but that's going to be the case with Union every year. Um, we're very familiar with those guys. We you know, saw them twice uh, in the season last year, two completely different games. One was a little bit of a, uh, a track meet, and then obviously the playoff game, the semifinal game was uh, more the old school – uh, a lot of defense, low-scoring game. Uh, we see those guys in team camp. We see them all summer in um, in passing leagues, seven-on-seven seven tournaments. Uh, so, and, and our kids, they all know each other. I right. mean, they, they go to church together. They probably hang out every once in a while. Uh, so we're very familiar with those guys. And, and like I said at the beginning, Union's always going to be talented. I know they had a lot of speed last year. I'm sure that hasn't gone away. What do they look like in the, in the trenches? Uh, they're huge up front. Um, uh, on the offensive line, they've got a running back uh, that moved in, and is he's dynamic. Um, defensive line, uh, they're big and strong. They've got a nose guard uh, that, that'll be one of the better ones we'll see all year. All right, so that's a little bit of a preview of the Union Red Hawks coming in uh, here to Broken Arrow on Friday night. We'll be looking forward to having that one on Arrowvision. Coach Blankenship, thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you guys next week. This has been Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crit. <laughs>